you from the Mobile Command Center like we do every Thursday morning. All right. So last week, Phelan seated eight Democratic chairmen. This was a pass fail. This is our legislative priority. Don't seat any of them. Now, a lot of times, our legislative priorities are a bit, yeah, touchy. You know, we want to protect children. Okay, who can argue against that? We want to do this. We want to do that. And if they pass a bill with that name on it that does any good at all, and sometimes none at all, we can claim victory. Okay, look, we protected the kids a little bit. We'll protect them more next time around. I could see that argument. This no-seating Democratic chairs was a pass-fail. You either did it or you didn't do it. And from the very beginning, before it was even part of our legislative priorities, when it was still being talked about, we had state representatives that were supposed to represent us. And, you know, public servants are supposed to give us what we want because they're servants, not masters. We had these clowns, and you are clowns and you know who you are, going around saying, no, I'm going to vote to seat Democratic chairs because my career is more important than the voters or the state of Texas or the nation or my family or anything else. I don't represent the Republican Party. Then why do you run on our ticket? Because I want to win. It's the only thing I believe in. So, here's the deal. They seated Democratic chairman. We voted and elected with our power. We gave it to our elected representatives. Our elected representatives turned some of that power over to Democrats. That's a failure. Now, I rightly suspected that the GOP, Texas GOP, didn't care about that legislative priority at all. They lied when they said they, they did. Because just like elected representatives, they don't represent us. And they don't tell the truth. And they don't give us what we want. Now, the reason I knew that they didn't care about this is because they didn't hold a press conference and say, if that man dare seats even a single Democratic chair, we will bring him up. And that'll be the first strike on a censure against him. We have... As a GOP across Texas, we have gotten rid of speakers of the House in the past. You will not see Joe Strauss running for office anytime soon, in any capacity, because he was censured out of politics, okay? Your censure does not remove you from office, but it can remove you from politics, which is even better. Most recently, last time around, three counties censured Chris Patty. Not only did that remove him from politics, it also removed him from office because he resigned before the other three counties could get their censures passed. Because eventually I think this man wants to come back and run for office again. They're addicted to it. And the GOP is set up to be the drug dealer to help them feed their addiction. Now, we're the people they're stealing from to feed their addiction. It's our votes, our power, our money, our taxes that they're stealing. Because if they're not representing us, who are they representing? If it's not us, it's got to be somebody else. It, who? Whoever gives them money, whoever helps them get reelected. In fact, I would say most people in the GOP, at least one of my SRECs included, the only thing that they're willing to fight for, and the only thing that they care about, is their own reelection. That's it. Nothing else matters. They'll sell you out, they'll sell me out, they'll sell the whole state and the nation out for that re-election or that next higher office. So the GOP failed to do this in advance. They should have held a press conference and said, listen, we're going to recommend every GOP county in Texas pass a resolution as soon as Dave Phelan seats the first Democratic chair that that is a violation of our Republican principles, our representative form of government. It violates the party principles. Under Rule 44, that's a first strike. If he seats a second one, then he's repeated that same offense. And that'll be a second strike. And if he seats three Democratic chairmen, that's three violations. That's enough for a censure. I did not anticipate just how, I would call it cowardly, except it's not. They're sellouts. I did not anticipate just how far down and corrupt the state GOP would be on this issue. This is how far down they are, folks. They have SRECs going out and they have county chairs going out saying, 
you can't censure Dave Phelan because he's not in your district. A lot of these SRECs and a lot of these county chairs that are saying this, they voted to censure uh, Strauss. They voted to censure Bonin when he was a speaker. So it can be done. Because guess what, folks? When you elect your representative and then they elect a speaker, you have elected that speaker through your elected representatives, whether they voted for the person you wanted or not. That would be like saying we can't censure the chair or the vice chair of the Republican Party of Texas because they don't represent us. True enough, they're not really representing us if they don't hold our elected accountable because that's what we want. That's what I want as a Republican. But you don't directly elect those people in your uh, precinct conventions and your county conventions, you send delegates to the state convention. So through your delegates, you elect these people. They're not immune from censure. That's an elected position. It's just elected through, uh, you know, your representatives. So of course they're subject to censure. So that is a lie. And if your SRECs and your county chairs and your precinct chairs are lying to you and saying you can't censure this man because he's not in your district when he represents all the state of Texas. They are liars. L-I-A-R-S. Liars. Okay, that's a new word. And I mean it. And the next thing going on is when you're challenging these people and you have to call them out, you cannot let these lies go in these meetings. Okay, there's a question and answer you need to do this when everybody can hear it while they're still on the stage and behind the mic. Hey, if I can't vote to censure Phelan, how come the GOP could vote to censure Strauss? How come the GOP, the county GOPs, could vote to censure Bonnet? What changed? Nothing changed, except the GOP sold out. They don't want Phelan censured. They want our power handed over to Democrats. The next step up, and this is getting pretty far down the rabbit hole here a little bit, but the next stage up, a lot of times when they're challenged about that, they kind of look like a deer in the headlights and they go, oh yeah, I guess uh, I guess we did censure that guy that was a speaker. I guess it's possible. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, let me skip to the next lie. Because they'll skip the lily pad right to the next lie. Uh, 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 he only broke one of the violations. He, it's only one violation. It's not three violations. It's only one violation. No, he seated eight chairs. That's eight violations. If I go to a room and kill eight per eight people with one knife, it is one crime and one knife, but I guarantee you there's eight charges. It's eight violations of the law. Are you saying that the same guy in the, in the state house can vote 100% against something that's in the uh, Republican Party platform time after time after time after time, as long as that person votes against that one thing, they're immune. Well, geez, thanks for road mapping how these people are going to screw us over and steal our legislative priorities away from us. What they're going to do is they're going to divide into eight groups, the Republicans, and then everybody can vote for seven of our priorities and vote against one. Now, along with the Democrats, they're going to vote against our priorities. That means everything fails. But not a single one of those people can be held accountable for voting against one of our priorities because they could brag they voted for the other seven. See how this works? They're a team. You're giving them the rules and the handbooks on how to violate us and our conservative principles and our party platform and our rules. Here's the roadmap. Here's how you screw us over every year and we're powerless to do anything against it. Well, that's BS. You can, when you do eight violations, you do eight violations. Now, here's the scary part. And this, I'm telling you, man, I'm constantly amazed. The GOP is going out there, and I've heard it from more than one person, okay? So this was a plan. This was a brain trust, okay? These people didn't just spawn this idea independently across the state of Texas. This was a plan. And it probably, they probably came up with it before it even happened. But they're saying that last time around, Dave Phelan seated 13 Democratic chairs, this time around, thanks to our hard work, he only seated eight. That's a win in anybody's thing. That's how you eat the elephant one bite at a time. Let me ask you something. If you had a teacher that just slapped the holy crap out of your kid 13 times last year, 
and you had a serious one-on-one -on -one talk with that person, and they only slapped the living shit out of your kid eight times this year, would you be bragging about your accomplishment? Would you be bragging about it to your kid? Because that's what they're doing. They're saying, thanks to our hard work. We, we, we got five last year. That, we didn't ask for five less chairs, moron. We asked for zero. We got eight. So here's my thing. I live in Texas. Where the hell? What the hell happened to Texas? It used to mean something. It used to be something. Somebody looked me in the eye as a Texan and said, hey, I'm your servant, but I'm not going to do what you ask. They're out of a job. My kid told me that. They're out more than a job. And if my elected official told me that, they'd be looking for work. So what happened? Where are the Texans that are county chairs and precinct chairs across this state? Are there any left? The people that moved here from anywhere you came from, you now live in Texas. You're as Texan as Davy Crockett, as Bowie, neither of which were born here. But you live here now. Act like a damn Texan or go to hell home where the rest of the weenies live, okay? And if you were born here, hide your head in shame. Hide your face behind your hat. And that's happened too. And those are supposedly Texas GOP high muckety mucks hiding their face behind their hat when they're asked a tough question. It's embarrassing. So where are the censures of feeling? What county is talking about it? If, you, if there's thousands of precinct chairs across Texas, which ones are brave enough to bring it up? You make a motion. You find somebody to second the motion. You get a recorded vote. You find out who the real conservatives are in your group. You find out who the elites are that only care about the people who are in office and not about our priorities. And you get rid of them in the next, next primary. You can find people to replace them. It's not that hard. Most people, precinct chairs, you can win them with a box of business cards and a little shoe leather. It's at the bottom of the list. Nobody knows who a precinct chair is for the most part. Nobody recognizes their name except a small handful of people. You win these elections a lot of times with a dozen votes or less. There's no excuse not to replace the bad ones. There's no excuse not to find good people to fill the empties. There's no excuse not to do what you're supposed to do, which is to stand up, represent the people in your voting precinct, and censure the hell out of this Dave Feeling clown. Now, he already bought off his home county because he gives them a free place to meet. At least they got something. What the hell did your county get that you sold out? What did the party threaten you with that you're too, too scared to do anything? You don't want to get looked at funny. I know plenty of Texans across this state that will stand up and do this. Feeling will be censured in several, several counties, okay? It's just a matter of time. They got to give them a couple weeks notice. You know, they got to go through the rules. It will happen. Don't be the last county. I know you won't be able to be the first. Because I already know who the first is going to be. That's the same county it is all the time. Because it's full of Texans. It's full of people willing to stand up. Not afraid to get looked at funny. Not afraid to tell some parliamentarian in Austin that they're full of it. And that this county will decide how we vote. Not you. You can decide how the SREC votes because you're the parliamentarian. And those 62 people are sitting at the table. I don't even know why they're here. The parliamentarian decides whether they can vote for this or not. If it's written properly, blah, 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 blah. Like 62 brains don't equal one parliamentarian brain. That's sad. Resign. Find somebody smarter. While you're at it, resign those second positions that you hold to artificially keep the, count, uh, to keep the GOP small and meaningless and less powerful than it should be. If you're a precinct chair and a county chair... Uh, and an SREC member, or and a VP, or and a whatever. If you're more wearing more than one hat, get rid of it. Hand it to somebody you trust. Don't tell me there's nobody in your county that can possibly do whatever other job it is that you have so that you can concentrate on the important one. These people are, some of these SRECs are traveling across the state all the time, all the time, all the time. 
Never found a mic they couldn't, you know, couldn't jump behind. Hell, if they fell off a boat around a lighthouse at night, they drowned trying to stay in the spotlight. But at the same time, there's a precinct chair position or a county chair, a chair position back in their hometown that they're not at. They'll show up for the meetings, but they're not there. They're not organizing those things. They're not doing anything. They're just holding on. Like I said before, I'd rather have 10,000 Trump supporters than one Trump supporter with 10,000 hats. They're keeping the party small on purpose because they want to be more important than they are, which is sad. And it's sad for the state. So uh, for the people out there that have heard others telling you what we're about, why I do what I do, I got to let you know that there's basically three groups of people out there talking about us. One are fools. They don't know us. They haven't asked us any questions, but they will state as fact what somebody else said or what they feel without saying, oh, my feeling is blah, blah, blah. They will just state it as an out and out fact. He does this to make money. Well, that ain't happening, folks. I don't make money at this. It costs money. Uh, he charges for his endorsements. Well, that didn't happen last time around. In fact, we donated money to as many of the candidates that we endorsed as we possibly could. We went to uh, events. We sold a whole lot of books. Instead of getting a hotel, we slept in a truck that night. And then we took that money, divided it up, and we sent it to candidates that we believed in. Now, we didn't donate to every, you know, all 40 five-star candidates, but we donated to a lot of them. And it wasn't a lot of money. It's a little here and a little there. It's what we could afford. But it was more than most people. So we're not getting rich off of this. Oh, he's doing it to, to run for office. That is a lie. I've said over and over again, I, I look at office like jury duty. I don't, I've managed to avoid both, okay? It's something that people should be willing to do, but not something they should want. Not something they should plan for. I don't know anybody that connives and plans and, and orchestrates their whole life so that they can be on jury duty, okay? People out there that I believe in are willing to serve. They don't want to serve. And they definitely don't want to serve for life. Thank you for the people that stand up and defend us against those people who are just plain speaking, just, just pulling facts out of the air or repeating what they've heard. They're fools. Now, the good thing about freedom of speech is when you hear fools speak, you know how much thought goes into their process, and you don't have to listen to them anymore. It saves you some time. The next group of people are just out and out liars, okay? They will tell you these things, and they will say definitely, this is why he's doing this, and they haven't heard it. They're just making it up as they go. I have been called a Democratic operative. I have been called a rhino. I have been called a socialist. Somebody said, hey, there's five stars and a Chinese flag. I know what the five star plan about. You're a moron. You're an absolute moron. There's no way you could read my book, The Five Star Plan, and come up with I'm a communist. It's the last thing you'd ever think. What I am is a conservative that seeks to remake the party so it holds our conservative, supposedly, conservative legislators to count the task. Like Abbott, who violated our Constitution 17 different ways, who to this day still has an emergency order out that next month will be three years without a Republican form of government in Texas. See, a Republican form of government, the way our Constitution is set up, is we have a separation of powers. One person writes a law, another person enforces a law, another group of people rule on that law. Currently, right now, our executive, our governor, could scribble something down on a piece of paper because of the Emergency Powers Act, and it will have the force of law. He's a king without being called a king. And nobody has a problem with it. I don't see our legislators calling for an impeachment or even a threat of impeachment to get their power back. Because right now, like I said, he can write any law he wants. And then, just like he did during the emergency, he could call up judges and tell people... Tell them how to rule on that mandate that he put out. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, I didn't mean to include churches. Oh, I didn't mean to put people in jail over it. Really? 
Well, if you didn't think it through, that's probably why you're not a lawmaker. You just enforce the ones that other people thought through and wrote properly. That's why we don't give all that power to one person. But he keeps extending it. He keeps extending it. And I'm wondering if we're just permanently going to be living under a state of emergency for the rest of my life in Texas. And people step up and try to defend this and go, well, he's not actually using it. Well, okay, then why is he still extending it? Can he redeclare an emergency later if there's an emergency? I'd love to see a show of hands in Texas who thinks COVID's still an emergency. It's not. It never was, folks. It's just a scam. It's just a, a flu bug that they ramped up. And everybody fell for it. And once they got that taste of power, they want to let it go. They made too damn much money for their friends and their supporters. Millions and millions of dollars was made off of this. Billions, actually, nationwide. And they're still doing it. And no one's holding them to account. So why do I do what I do? Well, because my grandfather fought in World War I. He came back to Prohibition. My father fought in World War II. He came back, found out he had to have a permit to build a house on land that they'd owned for 100 years. Me and my brother came back from the Gulf War. And my little brother found out he couldn't get a permit for a house and build it himself. He had to have a contractor's license where he lived, which would have cost him 40 grand. 40 grand for permission to put one board together with another and call it a house. That's not freedom, folks. And then my son, the ultimate insult, he gets out of the Marine Corps, and two months later, we're on lockdowns. He had a plan. He had a career path. He had a good job lined up. And it was all shot to hell because of Governor Abbott and the other governors that decided to step up and be dictators. And I'm just adding tater to the end of it to be nice. My family is sick and tired of going overseas and putting our life on the line for freedom and coming back to less of it than when we left. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, a lot of people in the GOP will say they believe in term limits and they're liars because they don't believe in term limits. They believe in term limits for people they don't like. Well, hell, who doesn't? But when it comes to actual term limits, they don't want a term limit on the people they like. They want them to stay in office until they rot which will happen if you stay in office long enough. Look at Biden. He's been in that barrel for 50 years. We do what we do for the good of the state, for our kids and for our grandkids. We're not benefiting from it. I don't want to benefit from it. And if somebody says they are, they're either fools or they're liars. You don't have to listen to them. Now, the third group of people who talk about us like us. That might be a smaller group. But if they've met us, if they know us, if we've helped them take over their county, help them get into office, or anything that we've done to help them, they'll tell you, we don't want anything in return. So the next time somebody mentions us, negative or positive, try to figure out which group they fall in. So if you know that you know you should pay attention to them or not. Because fools are fools on every subject, and liars are liars on every subject. And fanboys can get it wrong, but at least they can tell you why. So the next thing going up is we've been trying really hard to double the GOP and get good people involved. Um, this month, we've got Braz, uh, Brazoria County, Brazos County, Brewster, Briscoe, and Brooks. Hey, we're doing this alphabetically. It's 254 counties. We, you know, got to figure out a system. So if you're in Brazoria... Brazos, Brewster, Briscoe, or Brooks Counties, go ahead and give us, contact us. Uh, we're on the fivestarplan.com. Just send us a message. Say, hey, I want to be a contact, point of contact. I want to help fill these empty precinct chairs. I want to find candidates to run against the bad precinct chairs, the do-nothings. And we'll help you, okay? We'll give you discounts on the training. We'll give you discounts on the book. Uh, I'll coach you. I'll talk to you on the phone for free. Uh, anything we can do to help. This has to be done, and we've got to start right now, folks. Now, if you live in another county, you want to be involved, or you know somebody wants to be involved in another county, have them contact us. We'll put that county at the top of the list next week. 
last week I think all five of all the five slots were out of order because we had so many volunteers coming in. This week we didn't get volunteers for these counties, so go ahead and contact us. Let's get it moving. And until next week, Robert West signing off.